Wasteland. Yes, welcome to today's episode where we are looking at how to build speed cameras, specifically UK style speed cameras. So this is something that Honestly, I've not seen anyone do in the post-apocalyptic car community. Like, not Gaslands, not Auto Kill, not Devil's Run, nothing. No one's ever thought, hey, you know what would make for a fun objective or a fun thing to smash a car into? A speed camera. So, this is a very, very simple build. It basically involves making a box, which I'm sure anyone who's ever done any form of crafting can do, because it's just... What, six sides stuck together? Nice and easy. So for this, we're going to be using this double thickness foam board. Um, I mean, you could just use regular thickness foam board, like cut two squares and glue them back to back. But I happen to have this off cut lying around, so I thought, why not use it? So they're about a centimeter square. So to actually build the speed camera, the easiest and quickest way will be to make a cardboard or chipboard covering for the front and back. So what we're doing is we're taking some cereal box card, just roughly drawing round the square, and then cutting out these little, little um, covers to go on the front and back. And for each one of these speed cameras, we're going to want three of these. Now, if you watch my last video on how to build crash barriers, I said that, you know, if you're going to build some terrain, you may as well build lots of it. And the same is true here. Now, I don't think anyone really needs to have like 15 speed cameras on the table, but I can think of a lot of different things you can do with like just four. You know, you could use them as gates or use them as obstacles or just a set dressing. So... Okay, so previously we would take off the paper backing to the foam, but in this case we don't want to do that because the paper backing is actually going to protect the foam as we super glue these little squares of cardboard to it. Um, if we took the foam off, then the super glue would just melt through and it would be a big mess. I'm still looking for that method. You guys have made some brilliant suggestions, but I'm still looking for that glue, that, that magical material that will just instantly bond to foam and not melt it or cause a chemical reaction. As you can see, it's just a piece of cardboard on the front and back. And we're going to leave that third one until after we've you know, covered the front and back of all of these. So the third one is what we're actually going to cut the speed camera sort of design onto. So whenever you look at pictures for speed cameras, they have this smaller camera in the top left and a larger camera that's got its own shroud in the bottom right, as well as this sort of thin um, grey plastic middle. I mean, okay, speed cameras are probably entirely made of plastic with like a metal shell, but um, I don't know the inner workings of a speed camera. I believe it's uh, it takes a photo just before you go into the the speed trap and then just after and then it calculates how fast you're going based on those two photos but hey ho so yeah very simple to reproduce it's just one small square and one big square and then what we're going to do after we've drawn those out is we're going to cut them out now the important thing here is use a craft knife you know this is going to be too fine and fiddly for using scissors you don't want to put any pressure on those end tabs, so the little thin bit of cardboard either side of the squares, because that will just rip straight off and you'll be like, you know, stressing out because you can't do it. And No, just don't touch those little tabs, but cut out the little squares, put them to one side, and we will be using those in a minute. And then the same applies to that middle rectangular strip. We want to cut that out as well. I mean, it's one of those things, you could just have a flat, plain surface to the speed camera and just paint the details on. No one would really notice, because at the end of the day, from like a couple of feet away looking down at a table, you know, it all sort of blurs together anyway. But you'll know, you'll know that you didn't uh, cut them out, and it'll eat away at you at night. <laughs> Alright, so once you've got those carefully snipped out, we can move to the next step, which is gluing them in place which is super, super easy. And because we've got that card backing on there, it's just a case of getting a drop of super glue, putting it along the back of the faceplate, 
and putting it in place. The key to remember is where the top of the speed camera is, you want the smaller square in the top left, and where the bottom of the speed camera is, you want the bigger square in the bottom right. So long as you can keep that in mind, you should have no problems. Speed cameras, for whatever reason, are just completely universal over here. They all look the same, regardless which side of the road they're on. So that's nice. But there you go. Just a bit of glue and it's in place. Now, before we start panelling up the sides, let's look at making the shroud for the bigger camera in the lower right. Now, if you kept that big square, you'll find that, that is the exact perfect size if you take a pair of needle nose pliers to just slip in to make the roof of the shroud. There you go, see? In this case, there you go, you can see. Look how that works, see how it fits? So you just want a bit of a drop of super glue on there and just push that into place. And then to get that angle look on the sides, what we're going to do, we'll take the smaller square that we cut and then using that as a rough guide, because as you can see, it's actually perfectly sized to just fit underneath there. Um, we're going to use that as a guide for the width and we're going to take a new piece of cardboard, measure it out and then cut a little thin strip off and then at about a 45 degree angle, maybe a bit steeper, maybe a bit less steep, we're going to cut the sides of the shroud. And then the easiest way to make a duplicate of something is just turn it around and then use that as a guide for cutting the other one. So again, needle nose pliers, do check that they fit and that it's the right look before you glue it into place, because there's nothing worse than gluing it all together and then going, oh, it's just slightly off and it'll look weird when I paint it. So yeah, needle nose pliers, glue that into place and we can move on to the next step. Well, also do that to all the other speed cameras. Yeah. All, all of these steps repeat by like four. <laughs> So cutting the sides of the speed cameras is basically the same principle we had with the front and rear faceplate. So you're just measuring the foam and then cutting it with a pair of scissors or with a craft knife. Now, the difference is we're not going to put super glue straight onto the foam. That would melt it. We're going to use PVA, but PVA takes too long to dry. So yes, we've put this in place. But what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to take a bit of super glue and we're just going to put a little drop at that seam where the two card surfaces meet. So it's not touching the foam, but it's holding the card together. And that will hold while the PVA glue dries underneath. So that's really helpful. So to make the, the bottom, it's the exact same. But to make the top, well, we have to keep in mind that there's that overhang that protects the smaller camera in the top left. So measure out the width of your speed camera. There's something I never thought I'd hear myself say. And then cutting that out of a pair of scissors. I would just eyeball this at this point in terms of the length. You don't need to be super accurate because you know it's just a speed camera in the apocalypse it doesn't need to be accurate um, especially if you're planning on like battle damaging these as well like it really doesn't matter um, so just roughly measure out how long you think this should be and then because these are all the same size just use that as a template for the next two or the next three that you're making and then it's the exact same technique again PVA glue drop of super glue and away you go here we are with our finished speed camera head. So now let's move on to making the base. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice that in the background you can see all the crash barriers I made for that video. Yes, that's right, Wasteland, I made these videos at the same time. Who'd have thought it? Because basically it's the same. It's the exact same technique. We're going to be putting sprue in the foam base. So if you watch the crash barrier video, you know what I'm going to talk about here. So we're cutting a roughly oval shape piece of foam and then beveling the edges with a craft knife, just like we did with the crash barriers. And we're going to use quite a long piece of sprue. If you've ever seen a speed camera up close in real life, they do hang quite high off the ground. They're not like street level. They're not as high as street lights, but they're, they're above like pedestrians' heads. 
So you do want them quite high. I'd say a good couple of actual couple of inches of sprue, as opposed to my last video where I said only an inch. No, I said two inches, but I meant only an inch. So when you got yours cut out, it's time to go on to the next step, which is making the indents and then gluing it in with a bit of PVA and a bit of grab adhesive. And I have had some great advice from you guys. And there are things that I need to experiment with. Um, there are still things that I know for certain don't work, like super glue, chemical reaction, it just melts. Um, and hot glue gun, I suppose if you held it high enough away from the foam, it wouldn't melt. But I'd, I still wouldn't really trust it. I mean, chances are it would, you know, if you get the metal nib of a hot glue gun close to that foam, it's just going to stick and start melting it. So this is what works for now. But I have had some great suggestions, so keep them coming, guys. What works for you? Because I want to try it out. Okay, so we've got our bases that are nice and dry, and we've got our speed camera heads. But how are we going to stick the two together? Now, if you look at any photos of speed cameras, you'll notice that they have this little right angle pipe that holds it to its stand. And this is, I suppose, so that it actually leans out into the road just enough so that it can get a reading on license plates, while at the same time not be, you know, too far out that it poses a risk. Um, but it's really simple to do. Just get some plastic rod that you've got lying around or any any scrap rod material, like um, if you've got any earbuds or uh, lollipop sticks, you know, like Tootsie Roll pop sticks, like they, they work absolutely fine. Now there's a little separating disc between the speed camera head and the pipe. Now this is a completely unnecessary step, but I like to do it for that extra bit of detail. I'm using a little off cut of sprue and I'm gluing that to the base before I then glue on the right angle pipe. And that's just to recreate that effect. I mean, you could add more detail to these. Like I've said, you could do all sorts of battle damage and cool stuff like that. But you could also look at trying to recreate some of the, the back details on these. Because I know there's like a little access panel for you know people to tinker with the cameras. But anyway, once you've, once you've glued your right angle on there. It's just a simple case of making sure that it's got the right look when it will be attached to the base. You know, in some cases you might find it hangs over a bit too much or the right angle wasn't as perfectly 90 degrees as you would have liked it. But you can, you know, at this stage, this is when you can like take a craft knife and just clean that up. But then attaching it is super simple. Drop of super glue, stick that on. Now, I've said before, but these things in real life, they seem to alternate which side they lean out. Do they come out from the left or do they come out from the right? You can do either or. Moving on, we're going to be basing this and exactly the same as the crash barriers. I did it at exactly the same time as the crash barriers. Um, using a bit of PVA, a bit of sawdust, we're going to put the base texture on there. As I said in the previous video, yes, you can use something like Astro Granite Earth. Uh, oh, sorry, Astro Granite Debris, but in this case, we're just going to use sawdust. So painting it, um, same as before, you know, PVA, black poster paint to give that sealant layer. And then we're just jumping straight into the actual painting. So cheapo craft store brown paint for that base coat on the whole thing. To paint the actual support structure of this, we're just going to use some silver, some, you know, bulk and metal. Um, what I would say is, in real life, these things are just covered in, like, weather-resistant paint and made of plastic. And, that, and you know, they're grey and they're ugly um, because they're there to serve a purpose. In your wasteland, you can make them look like whatever you want. You know, if you want it to be metal, paint it metal. That's what I'm doing because it feels more natural to me than if it was this big grey concrete looking thing but your your wasteland your rules you can paint them however you like um but yeah we're even painting the sides hood and bottom of the speed camera as well but we're not going to paint the front and back because we're doing that in yellow now this is how i like to paint yellow because yellow is a notoriously difficult color i find a 50 50 mix of brown and yellow works really well for the base because it gives that sort of goldeny brown color 
This isn't going to be the final colour of the yellow. This is just to lighten and prepare the surface for when we start putting the layers of yellow on there. Because one of the problems people have when they paint yellow is they look at the yellow in the pot and they go, oh, I can just put this straight on the model. But if you're painting onto a dark brown or a black surface, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to give you enough coverage. It's going to look thin and streaky and rubbish. So you have to do these earlier, lighter steps to prepare the surface. You know, other colours don't have this problem, and I'm not entirely sure why yellow is such a difficult one, but if you ever get, if you ever know anyone in the 40k community that collects Imperial Fists, ask them how fun it is to paint yellow, because they all hate it, I tell you. Alright, so the next step would then be that second lighter step, and we, we're using like a 75 to 25 mix of yellow to brown here, but already you can see the previous layer dried and it did look quite brown, but now we're getting into the yellow and now it actually looks yellow. Man, I've said yellow a lot of times in the, in the last paragraph. I want to say as well, recording this, I just wing it. There's no, you get a lot of YouTubers and they like prepare scripts for hours ahead of time. I don't, I don't have that kind of luxury. I just sit down and record, okay, let's get this done, let's go. Because it's going to take time for me to then edit this into the video, but ah, never mind. But as you can see, that layer goes on really nicely. And if we compare that with what it looked like previously on the right, yeah, it looks a lot lighter already. Next step after that, same as with the crash barriers, we're painting brown across the base just to make sure if there was any silver paint that got onto the sawdust or onto the basing material, we're just covering over that. And then we get into the super exciting phase, which is the black wash. So same as before, if you've never seen or heard of what a black wash is, if you've never Googled it or seen it on YouTube, it's basically black poster paint mixed with water with a couple of drops of washing up liquid. It's a cheap man's and all oil. Um, it's perfect for terrain, but I wouldn't necessarily use it for models. Some people do, but moving on from that, we're going to start the actual, you know, final stages of the project. So we're doing a light brush of beige, or in this case, Ushab T-Bone, onto the base, just to cover over the brown, but also highlight, I'd say, the majority of the surface. You're still getting the brown in the deep cracks and crevices. And then, as you can see, that looks pretty good. Next step, we're going to be using some of that uh, Stormhost Silver, um, just to highlight some of the corners on the metal. If you had put any like damage onto this model at this point, it will just shine fabulously on any of the cracks or corners. It's a bit hard to see, but yeah, it's there. Uh, onto the next step, we're doing that 50-50 mix of white and beige to go over the base, which this is the joy of these kind of projects. Sometimes it's hard to catch on camera. I mean, I can see it perfect one-to-one -one when I look at it in real life, but it can be difficult to record. So the final stages now. So there is grey plastic on this, and I can't just paint it metal and then just imagine it's not. If you look at the dead centre of a speed camera, it has this long grey rectangle. I have no idea what its function is, but it's there, so I'm going to paint it on. Um, you could do this earlier and have it you know, be a little bit darkened by the black wash. Honestly, I don't think it's really necessary. You can just coat it on now and be done because it, because there's not going to be any highlights or anything done to it. It will really look like plastic and that's not a bad thing. And then finally, we're doing a bit of the uh, yellow just as a highlight because this is an apocalypse build. So it's not going to be radiating yellow like it would in real life. It's going to be pretty dark and dingy. So if you wanted it to be really bright, by all means at this point, put a solid layer of yellow on. But I'm just going to go over the, the high points and just bring those out with this. And, and pretty much there it is. I mean, besides touching it up in a few more areas, that is how to build speed cameras, UK edition, in a nutshell. Now, your your experiences may vary. You know, you can add little details or change things as you see fit. And I know that not everyone thinks of speed cameras when they think about the wasteland. 
but it's something that I've always really wanted to see in UK games of like Gaslands or Autokill that so far just just never get a shout. And for some reason, no one's ever thought to make them. So here we are, how to build speed cameras. And there are plenty of variations of speed cameras around the world. So there's lots you can do with this. And as the second terrain tutorial of 2020, yeah, it's been pretty fun. I mean, it's it's pretty quick and easy, and it's something you could be throwing together out of scraps that you have lying around, especially from other larger projects, like, say, for example, the crash barriers. And it just helps to add a bit more detail to your games. So, yeah, this was the first time I think I've ever tried to record basically two videos at once so that was pretty insane um uh, just just as a side note how things are doing this end uh operation mad was a success um I, I mean i'm not working for an automotive company yet or anything like that i just mean i managed to get done everything i wanted to do like you know the hr hr course was done the um portfolio was put together in the end you know all the clay work i was doing you know that all finished on time so yeah, but no, this has been really good fun. And hey, if you're uh, if you're interested in doing one of these projects or you just want to share photos of what you've been working on, head on down to Gasland's Facebook page to share them with the community because we do like to see this stuff. You don't have to just email it to me. The whole world wants to see what you've done. And likewise, if you're based in the UK and you fancy making some of these yourself, why not check out the Gasland's UK Facebook page because Hey, you know, there's no place like home. And they have a competition this month, if you didn't know, which is the car of the month for February 2020. This month's challenge is to build a diorama as selected by Hayland Terrain, the sponsor for this month's competition, and their prizes of 25, 15, and 10 pounds for the first, second, and third place winners. I mean, think of it this way. If only three guys enter, that they're going to get it all by default. So come on, guys in the UK, come on you got weeks to do this so as always guys thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed today's video please leave comments and subscribe and all that good stuff and if you fancy supporting the channel why not check out our sponsors if you use the code jh miniatures when checking out you too can get 10 percent off your order at Camsil designs and mad cars green miniatures all right, Wasteland, it's been great. Thank you. I'm out.